I'm the one that Steve cheated on you with. <laughs> I think that's the first prank I've ever pulled off in front of a live audience. And the little boy was in the back, and they got in a really bad crash, and the boy died. Do you think that there is just a portal down there where anything evil can come through? The glass got thrown so far across the room, probably from like here to the first camera. So he had to get enough of his own blood mm -hmm. to seal the whole door frame. Mm -hmm. The cousin is stuck there and he did bad things that caused whatever that was to be there. This is a very uh, lively crowd. Yeah, we made it to Detroit. We weren't sure. I'll be honest, we weren't sure if the motorhome was going to make it here. Uh, yeah, yeah, we got pretty lucky, honestly. This tour should have been sponsored by AAA, and <laughs> it would have gone a whole lot better. Yeah, a little bit better. Okay, so before we even get this show started, we have a whole lovely night planned for you. We have stories that have been submitted by people in the audience, some of the wildest stories we've heard all of tour. Uh, we also have a special guest that's going to be joining us. We also have a fun game that we're going to be playing, mm -hmm. but first... There was someone we met in our meet and greet before the show that has just a remarkable talent that I would love for you all to see. Alex, can you please come up here real quick? Get up here. Alex, can you please come up here real quick? Wait on. Don't do it yet. We're going to give you a countdown, okay? I don't want anyone to know what you're going to do. This is incredible. We're all going to count down together from 10, properly, not 666, all the yeah. way down, all the way down to one, and on zero, he's going to hit you with this talent. It's going to blow your f mind. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Everyone together, here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Damn! That was great. How? That was great. How? Flexible. 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 Apparently we have a, another another friend that can do that. Yeah, I think I think we have another friend here that is pretty flexible as well. He actually said your splits weren't good enough and he can do them way better. So should we should we see? Yeah, I think I think he has to prove it. He was talking a lot of shit to be yeah, honest. Yeah, he was he was he was uh, talking a lot of shit. So, uh, so <laughs> it, <laughs> some of uh some of you might know him as the donut man. Um he also goes by Evan with a camera. Uh, give it up for Evan Butka. <laughs> you got to do it. Oh, you got a countdown? All right, here we go. 10, 9, nine 8, eight seven, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. <laughs> I mean, the view was nice. <laughs> I can't uh, touch my toes. It's okay. <laughs> we flew you all the way out here just to do that. <laughs> just to do that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, man. Okay, this is going to be fun. You, I'm sure you all know Evan. He's literally been part of... He is literally overnight. The three of us are overnight. Like, we've never done an overnight video without all three of us there. We're the only trio that's been in every single video mm -hmm. ever. So I'm glad to have you here. Thank yeah, you. Glad to have you seriously. be part of this. And we can have so much fun making Evan uncomfortable. Because <laughs> normally he's behind the camera shaking his head like, you can't say that. Well, guess what, Evan? Tonight you are saying that. <laughs> we'll see about that. Yeah. And actually, last night you got to investigate with us. Yeah, that was actually fun. I, I want to know, how was that? You know, first time. That was kind of your first investigation. Without right? a camera. Without a camera in his hand. Just solely first a participant. full investigation. Because several times I've jumped in. Yes. Um, it was fun. Uh, although I still enjoy being behind the camera. Mm. We gave him an iPhone when we were leaving that night and he was so much happier. <laughs> he was like, oh my God, I can do my job now. <laughs> okay, so this is the real reason we decided to do this as a live show. Uh, it wasn't just to mess around and make kids cover their ears. Uh, it's for the fact that we wanted to bring everyone together into one space, into one room uh, versus doing this from our house in our office uh, because we want people to submit their stories and then not only be able to read them, but be able to bring them up here so we can talk to them about it and learn more about it versus something we could never really do properly through like Zoom or any other method. The other reason for it is because then all of you will realize that the person who has had this experience has had the story that they're sharing is a real person. It's not just something maybe on the internet that could be made up. It'll, uh, the goal is to hope, hopefully make everyone feel more comfortable 
sharing their own paranormal experiences and make this not as taboo or of like a forbidden frowned upon thing to talk about. And then secondly, uh, we also figured that a lot of people that come to these events also want to go on paranormal investigations, but maybe don't have other people they want to go on with. So anyone here is looking for people to go somewhere with, can you like throw up a hand just to see like how many of you actually want to go on investigations? Look at wow. that. I like how it started with two and then everyone else was like, okay, me too, me too, me too. <laughs> okay, so the beauty of that is when the show's over, you can all go outside by the parking lot, raise your hands again, right? Find each other and then go, cool, let's exchange phone numbers. Let's make a group chat, make a discord and start investigating with each other and having more friends. That's part of this whole thing. So go for it. All right. Starts like this. Hey, guys, my name is Katie and I've been told that I'm a sensitive. The night that I found out about my gift was when I was six. I was awoke by a noise in the dining room to which I had a clear view through my bedroom door. When I looked up, I saw a Native American in full headdress standing in front of the table. I yelled for my mom. When I did, he turned to look at me and disappeared. I don't see things physically very often, but can feel them and can see them in my mind. I have felt and seen multiple things throughout my life, but the most terrifying one was this. I was at home along with my best friend, Amber, who is here with me and my boyfriend at the time. No parents. This house is an over 150 year old farmhouse with a dirt basement. One thing to note is that my parents had decided to open up all the sealed crawl space that led to underneath and the other side of the house. When I tell you that it was sealed for a reason, it was. This night that my bestie and boyfriend were over, we decided to go check out the work my mom and dad had done. So we went downstairs and into the room that has the entrance to the crawl space in it. I instantly see something dark, furry and almost transparent and a strange kind of fuzzy around the edges. This thing had incredibly red piercing eyes. I ran, I ran up the stairs and it followed. I was screaming, I was panicking. I ran up and out of the basement, through the dining room and into the bathroom, which was my safe space. Amber was in there with me. I don't know how we ended up on the floor, but I remember her behind me pulling me backwards as I'm staring at the red eyes. We hit the back of the bathroom, me in her lap, so me laying in her lap. I blacked out, and when I woke up, it was gone. My boyfriend had used his blood to seal it back into the basement. Wow. He refused to tell me how. I do know his family are practicing pagans, so I took it at what it was and didn't push him any further. When my parents came home, my pastor dad went down and did a blessing. It did not get rid of whatever that thing was, but it is back to being confined in the crawl space again. I never go near it. Uh, Katie, could you come up here? Can I see that real quick? Come on. You all right? Okay. Come on up here. There's, there's stairs on the other side, though. Okay. Parkour! <laughs> yeah, take, take a seat. Take a seat. Uh, hello. Hi. What do you want to know? What do you want to share? Like, do you want to share? Because I, I, I see the most amount of emotion we've ever had from someone who's been brought on stage. Yeah, I'm shaky. Um, just hearing you read it, I could picture it in my mind. Hmm. And it kind of, like I said, I'm shaken. Um, kind of relived it in a way. Um, Amber's here with me. She's been my rock. That night was just so terrifying. I've never seen anything like that. I feel things like I wrote. But that was the worst night of my life when it comes to stuff like that. So I feel, well, seeing my mind ghosts all the time, but I'm afraid to talk to them. But 
it's just something I've had to live with my whole life. So coming here, I was afraid, walked in the door and it got heavy, like you hear people say, and I was like, oh, <laughs> it's going to be a wild ride. But so far, so good. Got my protections. So, so I just want to ask a couple questions then. So you said your, your, your boyfriend at the time mm -hmm. sealed it with blood. Mm -hmm. He sealed the crawl space? The ba basement door. The basement door. There was door. blood on the top. She remembers it better than me because I blacked out. And, but there was blood on the top of the... I just need you to hold the mic. Closer. Sorry. Yeah, you're okay. Um, like the door frame. And then uh, my parents painted over it. So I left it there. So he had to get enough of his own blood. Mm -hmm. And cut his finger open. Cut his finger open mm -hmm. to seal the whole door frame. Mm -hmm. Which also meant he immediately knew what to do in that circumstance. Yeah. Um, we had had many circumstances and discussions on the whole topic. I was very open with him. And he helped me cope, I guess, um, before him. I didn't know how to turn it off or bubble, as he calls it, to make myself feel safe if there's something next to me. I didn't know how to ignore it or what have you. So he helped me, taught me how to deal with it in some ways and stuff. So, um, yeah, he never really went into depth with what his parents believed in. He just knew what to do in that situation. So. How old were you guys at this time? 19? No. It was with John. So, 20... 17? Late teens. It was a while ago. Wow. Well, do you know if he ever had to do that before with the whole, you know, using his own blood to seal something up? Or do you think that's just something that he knew? I know he knew how to do it. I don't know if he, he didn't like to talk about his past experiences. He said that they were a little, he didn't want to scare me, hmm. but he was the type that would and, um, and antagonize hmm. to make them happen. Not me. I, I like to be like, okay, if you're there, that's cool. Just you know, keep your distance. I'm not like, yo, come on, let's do things. No thanks. Yeah. Because I kind of freak out a little. Do, so. you, do you feel it's possible that the reason he knew how to do what he did so quickly was because he caused it? I don't know. If, I don't think he caused it because it was there when we went downstairs. I yeah, think but how, long, how long were you dating for? God, well, I ended up marrying him. Not anymore. So we were together about 10 years total. Um... I mean, like, I, I just find it like, I mean, you ended up marrying him and he still never told you? Mm-mm. I never pressed him. How? He, you didn't want to know? Not really. Mm, mm I was just like, okay, that's cool. You do you. As long as you can keep me. Well, we had a son. As long as you can keep us, our family safe, I don't need to know what you did. I'm sure, well, I know my dad, as a pastor, had a conversation with him because conflicting beliefs. But... I didn't want to know. I don't want to know these things. I don't want that information because I don't want to think, well, can I do that? And then not have the uh, willpower to complete it and then screw things up even more. I don't want to tamper with things I'm not comfortable with. But it, it, it didn't start until your parents opened up the area down there, right. correct? Mm -hmm. So everything was fine. Oh, yeah, up absolutely. Until then. I've been up and down that staircase. I don't know how many times because me and Amber lived there before my parents even moved in. And it was fine. You know, we'd have drifting spirits here and there, but nothing like that. So what, do you think a demon or something was trapped in there from a curse or something in the past? Um, and then once it opened, it got released? My working theory, because that house specifically has a old family that's still there. Um, has a dad. The mom's since passed. There's two boys that live outside and a little girl that does not like scary things on the TV. She changes the TV. And then there's the cousin. The cousin is stuck there and he did bad things in his lifetime. And my working theory is the cousin did things in that room that caused whatever that was to be there and then screwed up and then he sealed it away. That's my theory. That's what I think. I'm not to kind of sidetrack, but I'm very mm -hmm. interested. One, for you to have a, a, a pagan husband and then a pastor father. Mm -hmm. How did that conversation go? Like, were you a part of that? Nope. I didn't want to hear any of it. Did you care? No. 
Would you have cared at all if your father was like, I, I can't approve of this? Or if your boyfriend was like, I can't approve of this? No, because uh, he didn't approve of the boyfriend. Regardless? No. Or because of the You didn't want to be at the wedding reception. <laughs> because he was a practicing pagan? Yes, it's part of it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. But it is what it is. I was a teenager and you know how teenagers go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you got married as teenagers. Well, we were younger. It was, I wasn't quite 18 yet, so. So, I'm, I'm just, it, it's so interesting to me. Like, I feel like when people get married mm -hmm. or they date, they want to know, like, everything about the other partner. And you mm -hmm. you were just totally fine with him just, just turning a blind eye to whatever things he did, knowing that obviously he works with blood. And well, he didn't do it often. Like, that was the one time that I know of that he... He used his blood for anything. Like he wasn't a he, he wasn't a practicing pagan. His parents were, so okay. he learned the skills from them. But he was an atheist. So Did you ever talk to his family about that night? No, I don't like to talk about that night. Mm. I would have loved to have been <laughs> at your Thanksgiving with your pastor father <laughs> and your husband's pagan parents as well. They, they yeah. didn't get along very well either. That's literally like meet the. <laughs> But just like <laughs> <laughs> paranormal edition. Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah, I, it's just so, I've never seen someone walk on stage and be so nerve wracked by it. Like, what were you, what were you thinking when that was happening? Like, did you think this was the end for you? Like, oh, I got to get away. Just got to get away. I ran, I ran to my safe space. The bathrooms in any place is always my safe space. I don't know why, but I ran and Amber knew where I was going apparently. And uh, she's always been my safe person. And, uh, I just had to get away from it. I didn't know what to do. I just panicked and I ran. This was, that was my thought process. Got to get out. Got to go. How clear was it? Like, was it see-through or was it, that looked like literally like a monster? Um, yes and no. It was more like the more into the thing it was, it was more solid and it would like fade out to like the almost transparent on like almost a black cloudy Mm. on the outside yeah and it didn't really have like it wasn't like a humanoid type body it was it had arms but they weren't long um i don't remember legs i just remember shoulder ish then head and then the eyes were right there all i remember is those eyes and uh, and i had to go there was teeth i remember the teeth and amber said it said my name to her yeah, because she wrote her her aspect, and I read it. She never told me that it said my name to her. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, what the hell? What? And that freaked me out whenever we were writing it a couple weeks ago. I was like, oh, man. So I'm glad that that's out of my life, that's for sure. You, like, passed out, right, in the bathroom? Passed out, blacked out. I, one or the other, I don't remember. I know I was gone. And then I came back up, and it was it was. Because it, it couldn't come in the bathroom for some reason. It was just outside the bathroom door, just watching and looking. And I don't know why it couldn't go in the bathroom. But how did how did whoever you were with how did they say it disappeared? I didn't ask. Mm. He said it's gone, and I went okay. So that was gonna be my question: is after the door was sealed, there was no more signs. It completely suppressed it, or um, not completely? Because when you go downstairs, you have your main ba uh, basement, and then there's a room off to it, and the room off to it is where the crawl space is. I don't like going into the room off to it because I can still sense it. If I get closer to the, the crawl space, I can sense it even more. So I don't like to go in that room. But the main room I can go in. I still feel uneasy, but I know that I'm safe. I deal with it. You still live there? No, my parents do. My parents still live there. Mm -hmm. Have your parents said that anything's happened? Not with him. With the little boys like to hide my mom's keys. Um, she'll have her car keys hanging up where they always go. And she'll be looking for them on multiple occasions. And she'll be like, Katie, can you come over and ask these boys where my keys are? And by, before I get over there, like one time, they were under her uh, brake pedal in her locked car. What? <laughs> I was like, I don't know, man. Um, okay, so uh, I, it I, know, I know it's hard for you to kind of rethink about that, but I, I'm just... You see this mass, you see this entity, mm -hmm. you obviously have a belief in this world, you kind of know what it is. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking is going to happen if you don't run? Like, is this your life's over? Like, what, what, what is the fear, right? Because, like, obviously, you see something, you run, but there's normally, like, a more driven, like, what's going to happen, right? You see a bear, and you run away because you know bear's going to maul you. Like, oh. so, 
You see this thing. What are you afraid is going to happen? I don't know. I mean, if I think about it, maybe possession, but I don't think it was... I don't know if it was de- demonic. Because I've read things since, and I don't know I don't know what it was. It looked solid to me, so I, I don't know. I just didn't want to get hurt in any way. Yeah. Because I just saw that it was staring at me, and I was like, oh, no, it's going to do something to me, and I just didn't want to find out what that was. Yeah, so. I mean, I feel like your your boyfriend at the time knew probably what it was, if he knew. Oh, he may have. I never... I never thought to ask. Yeah, because, I mean, if he knew immediately, hey, I need to put my blood on the doorframe. Right. I mean, I wonder if we could even go backwards and look up, like, a pagan protection ritual Mm. and see see, what it means to put blood on, you know I mean, a doorframe or an enclosure or something and then work backwards and go, okay, you only do this in case of something demonic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know he said that uh, for me to never try it because you have to know what you're doing. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I ain't going to try nothing. I don't know what I'm doing. I yeah. was raised Baptist, so I know, like, I'm wearing a cross and, you know, things like that. I know how to do that aspect of things. I know nothing about any other religion. So. Wait, did your family believe you when you told them? Oh, yeah. Yeah. My mom, for sure. My dad's, for a while, he was a little sketchy, but, like, with everybody else that I come in contact to, a lot of them I have to prove in a way of them seeing me freak out. Oh, crap, there is something. She ain't lying. Mm-hmm. So once my dad had witnessed a couple of times, he knows, he understands. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure once they saw the blood and they had to paint over it, they realized how serious it was. Like, nobody would just do that. Right. For sure. Wow. Any, uh, any other questions from you guys? I guess the thing that I'm just trying to get, trying to process is like, what do you think it's more leading to? Do you think that there is just a portal down there where anything evil can come through or do you think that something evil was casted to stay in there trapped in there trapped in there because there's i don't feel anything else in the basement and the like the the other spirits don't go downstairs even Mm -hmm. the cousin does not go downstairs um but there's nothing else that's down there and I, that's what I feel like happened is that he did something and it screwed up and now there's something in there and he's like, oh crap, I don't know what to do with this. So mm-hmm. it's stuck. I don't think there's a portal. But since ever off. ever since the blood and everything, ever since that was closed, nothing evil or demonic has happened in that house since, right? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. The, the wow. spirits are in and out, but I don't, I yeah. don't think anything evil has happened since, no. I want to work backwards then. I want to look up what that was and then figure out what it was used for. And then maybe there's an answer there. Like if there's a certain type of demon that you have to use that on. Exactly. Work a little bit backwards on it. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. thank you. No problem. Sincerely, thank you for sharing. Seriously. Thank you. Involved, right? thank, you. Yeah. thank you so much. Yeah, there's a little staircase right there. Okay. Corey, we talked about this beforehand. Uh, we've done this once before during a story, and it was pretty funny that I think, and if you agree... Corey's done it. I've done it. Evan hasn't. Should he have to act out the next story? Yeah. Good luck, buddy. Wow. <laughs> we talked about this in the RV and Corey was going to do it. Well, Corey, we, we do it with him? Oh. Come on. Do you want Corey to act it out too? <laughs> The two of you together? Are we about are we about to do a duet? Hold I on. think it's a duet. Let's We're doing see. a duet. Wait, wait, let me make sure. Let me even make sure this is for like two people. Uh-oh. Yeah, okay, it is. Yes. There's literally a part in it that says my in the middle of the story it says myself and Jessica. Okay, so I'll join you. I'll join you. I'll tap you in. Okay. No, 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 no. There's there's gonna be two people in this. It says myself and Jessica. There's like two people are, are, are in this story. Okay. So together? Okay, together. Okay. <laughs> Get ready. All right, drop your mic, dude. You're just you're acting it out. I'm gonna bring the story to life. You don't think that was a demon, dude? <laughs> <laughs> look at look at Evan's body language is like f- me. I'm so ready. You have no idea. You're so ready. I've been practicing practicing for this for my entire life. Okay. Prove it right now. Prove it. Front give us give us thirty seconds of I'm a performer. Just right now. Do the split thing again. <laughs> All right, we ready? I like the, the petty cheer. 
<laughs> this couldn't have a better start to act it out. Okay. All right, here we go. You start. This is a story. We're going to bring this story to life. So whoever we bring up on stage needs to feel like they relived that moment. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. Okay. This story is a bit weird, and I'm honestly pretty nervous to even talk about it, especially if you do choose it for the show. But I think it's a story worth sharing and could be helpful to others. It was winter 2016 at my grandparents' cabin. Why are you looking at me? You're performing for them. What are you doing? Four. Center stage. Get in the middle. Get in the middle. It was winter 2016 at my grandparents' cabin. They had left us that year, so it was myself and my best friend. My dad was. My dad was there too, but he was always out skiing. I, <laughs> I swear, my dad loves to ski more than anything else. He used to always tell us he would have been in the X Games if he was born <laughs> later. He also, <laughs> what the f <laughs> He also said he remembers his birth. <laughs> he, <laughs> he literally told me he remembers seeing the light. <laughs> he remembers seeing the light for the first time after his mother pushed him free. <laughs> and it says, <laughs> my dad is really weird. Really, really weird. Like, would, <laughs> like he would make strange faces at anyone just to see if he could make them laugh. Normally, he scared them. <laughs> I'm saying that because he's the reason I believe in the paranormal. He was so open about everything. Uh, and then it, <laughs> and it says, by the way, I just realized it sounds like my grandparents died. They didn't. Uh, they left us to go on a vacation to Italy. Uh, <laughs> it said, Gramps. <laughs> it says, Gramps always wanted to ride a gondola. <laughs> <laughs> We're like a, a quarter of the way through the story. <laughs> okay, so it's winter. Myself and Jessica are watching are watching the movie where the girl crawls out of the TV screen to kill you. Where she does <laughs> where she does that weird back bend. <laughs> and crawls toward you while hissing. <laughs> and in the middle of the movie, our fire in the fireplace goes out. I don't mean it fades away. I mean it 100% goes out instantly. <laughs> like something smothered it completely. It terrified me. <laughs> Jessica started crying. <laughs> and I started freaking out. <laughs> Seriously, then it felt like our breath was taken away. <laughs> our lungs were empty. We both started crying. <laughs> then the TV turns off. And at this and at this point, we just grabbed each other. <laughs> as tight as you could ever imagine. <laughs> <laughs> like if we let go of each other at any point we would die <laughs> next the only other light no if you let go you die 
<laughs> Next, the only other light on the house went out. The bulb f exploded. <laughs> I remember looking at Jessica's eyes and thinking, okay, this is it. We're both just pouring out tears, crying, <laughs> crying frantically. <laughs> and then it says, we hit the floor, still holding on to each other as tight as we can. <laughs> <laughs> I remember no no keep, yep I remember <laughs> I remember Jessica looking at me like we were in our own movie and she whispered you're my best friend I love you she paused and I kid you not then she said I'm sorry and I said for what? Then seriously, I didn't, I didn't even care if we were going to die by some back bending bimbo b anymore. <laughs> she told me, I have to tell you, what the f She told me, I have to tell you, I'm the one that Steve cheated on you with. <laughs> okay. Okay. When I oh my god, I'm crying. Huh. Okay, when I tell you I never wanted to choke someone so bad. It took everything in me not to. I was already squeezing her. <laughs> We were on the floor. <laughs> I did wrestling in high school. I knew I could take her. <laughs> Just flip the forearm and she's done. <laughs> but I didn't. If we were both going to die right now anyways, she would go to hell and I wouldn't. <laughs> but all that anger gave me the courage to let go of Jessica. I stood up. No, just no, no, not Jessica. Just, just, yep, just you. Yep. Just, just, yep. I stood up and I shouted as loud as I could You do not have permission to harm me. <laughs> okay? <laughs> and for some reason, I thought the best way to show my dominance was to get sassy. <laughs> I f strutted through the house screaming, You cannot harm me. You do not have permission to be here. Then Jessica stood up too. She shouted, I'm a big girl. She shouted, I'm a big girl. Big girl will not let you harm us. Big girl, no harm. <laughs> As soon as she said that, the light turned back on, the TV turned on, the fireplace lit back up again. I don't understand what happened that night or why, but I still hate Jessica. <laughs> There's more. <laughs> If I were to ever see her again, I slap her right across the face. <laughs> Even though 
We still have matching tattoos on our inside bottom lips. Okay, whoever wrote that, you got to come on the stage right now. Holy f All right. <laughs> Give him a round of applause. Give him a round of applause. Um, okay. Okay, whoever wrote that, can you please come up here? Um, Elton Caste, could you please come on the stage right now? <laughs> Wow. Wow. I don't even know what to say. Was that fun for you? Was that fun? Did, did I do good? Dog. We straddled each other. We were straddling each other. <laughs> <laughs> Only the front row could see that. Yeah, that was VIP. Oh God! <laughs> Can I get a water? <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm I'm dripping sweat. Holy! F I love that you're like, yeah, we talked about it in the motorhome. I have to act out a story. <laughs> oh my God, that was so much fun. Was it? <laughs> they enjoyed it. Did you all enjoy that? I think we enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. I'm just glad to be sitting back down. Yeah. Yo, I, I think that's the first prank I've ever pulled off in front of a live audience. <laughs> <laughs> Was that your first prank on me? First prank on you? Yeah. I think so, dude. That you was were, a good you, one. What's so funny is yesterday, uh, we, the live show we were at with Evan, we talked about how the, the way we met and the first way we started working together was on a prank show, and he was the one who filmed all of my original pranks in, in the old house. So he was a part of all the times of torturing Corey. He helped me with a bamboozling on the Queen Mary and that big old prank that we did a few years ago. Yep. And then here we are. I finally gotcha. Wow. That was really good. Dude, I did not think you were going to commit that hard, bro. <laughs> It would have been more awkward if I just sat there awkward. I knew I knew you knew when I got to big girl. <laughs> as soon as you said that, I looked at him and I was like, Elton wrote this. <laughs> we had another story with someone actually. Uh, so we did another act out like a week ago. Yeah. And someone wrote like my mom said, stop being afraid. You need to act like a big girl. And he was like, big girl, not scared anymore. <laughs> so, I, so I figured I'd throw that in right at the very end. And God. <laughs> Oh, oh good my God. times, good times. Okay, all right. These you can hear, Evan. You can read the next one so you know it's not me. <laughs> oh. Should we give him a breather? <laughs> yeah, I think you should read that one. Do you want me to? Go for right, it. Can yeah. you act it out real quick? No, dude. No. <laughs> no. no. Okay, I, I will. I will read this one and then you'll take mine. Then. Um, okay. Okay. Just so, just so you know, uh, the real. I'm, I'm gonna I'll prove to you the real person here. Uh, Violet sh uh, Lavender Shot. You don't have to come on stage yet. Are you here? Perfect. Real person. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Here we go. <laughs> Dude, that's so funny. <laughs> oh, my God. I love it. Okay. <clears throat> this happened my first year of middle school. I was in bed listening to my music quietly. I was laying on my back with my eyes closed, starting to drift off. When I felt a cold draft over my face, I opened my eyes and saw this thing. My family members think, think, it could be many things, a Wendigo, a demon, other such creatures. I could never describe it accurately though. It was an extremely tall, pale white creature, just skin and bones with arms and legs that were too long. Its face is burned into my memory. The skull was perfectly visible, the eye sockets dark and deep, the teeth sharp as daggers, the smile from ear to ear, or where its ears would have been. The closest comparison I can make to it is the Wendigo from Until Dawn. But it's so much worse than that. It was overtop me on my bed. 
staring down at me with those empty eye sockets. It started to move its hand, and I shut my eyes tight. I fell asleep during this encounter. I woke up the next morning with scratches on my chest. I will say this was not sleep paralysis. I could move just fine. I don't know why I didn't run. Maybe I thought I was dreaming, but the scratches and this proved otherwise. I have quite a few witchy friends. I myself come from a long line of witches. One of my friends is connected to the other side quite well. I kept seeing this thing in the woods during my first year of marching band camp. It ran towards me while I was alone in the woods. So I went to my friend about it. She could see it very clearly and advised me to use a banishing spell on it. I'll admit, I procrastinated on that for three years. I didn't do anything about it until a new witchy friend of mine said it was holding on to me tightly draining all things good from me. In other words, it was trying to take away my mental health so I would, well, get to the point of no return. So I performed a vanishing ritual. I thought it worked, but my friend said it only made it angrier. So as far as I'm aware, while my mental health is better, it's still hunting me and waiting for the time I let my defenses down. Wow. So Violet, would you please mind joining us up here? Okay, to this day, uh, what, what year, I don't think it says how long ago this happened. How long ago did this initial uh, encounter happen? I am really bad with years. It, it was your first year of middle school, so. So I'm 18 now, I was 14 then. Okay, so four years ago. Yeah. Wow. And you still feel as though it's hunting you to this day. There's definitely something. I'm not sure if it's the same thing, but ever since then, I've been seeing a lot of things. So there might be multiple, but I'm not sure. And you said you have a lot of witchy friends. Yeah. But even all of them together haven't been able to kind of put something together to protect you and make this stop? Well, most of them say to handle it yourself because it's the best way to do it. Um, if you want to guard yourself, you have to use your... Um, magic and best way to put it um plus one moved to college my freshman year of high school and the other one is really young and doesn't like dealing with this so hmm. now i like i used to have sleep paralysis a lot growing up and obviously like what you're explaining and you were able to move like you were able to actually look around and stuff like that so you know for sure it wasn't sleep paralysis but you said how you just immediately close your eyes and fell back asleep for it to go away, right? I'm not sure if I did it myself or if it did it for me. Because mm. I would not have been able to fall asleep with that on me. I would have fought it. But yeah. I think it drained my energy and I wasn't able to fight back. How long do you remember like your eyes being open and like witnessing what was on top of you? Probably 30 seconds. Wow. And were you, would you say, even though that you could move, you still, you felt frozen? I don't know if it was fear or not, but yeah. And then do you have any like idea where this rooted from? Like why you, where it came from? I feel like a lot of times people say these things happen mm -hmm. and then they leave out the parts where they say, oh, I was the one who burned 10 Ouija boards in my bedroom. Well, I probably should have burned the Ouija board I used. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Okay. Middle school idiot playing with a Ouija board, not realizing what it was. <laughs> so do you attribute what this was and what happened here from something you did prior? That's what my aunt thinks I did. And what does your aunt believe that you did? Um, I was trying to scare a friend with the Ouija board because he believed in it a lot. I should have followed his advice and threw it away. I did not. <laughs> what did you do to scare this friend then? Did you like purposely move it over to a demonic name? Like, Did you purposely shift it around? Well, I used it on my own, which is one of the rules that you're not supposed to break. Um, and I did push it around, which is another rule you're not supposed to break. And I did it at night. I did everything you're not supposed to do. Um, but yeah, I moved it around and spelled Zozo, which was it. Mm. <laughs> and did you say you did this in the woods? Or? No, I did this in my basement at my current house. 
It's always in the basement. <laughs> why is no why is no one ever just taking a bubble bath? Just like Zozo. <laughs> like, it's all it's always in the deepest, darkest, creepiest part of the house. I mean, obviously it's where no one sees you. But it's always the basement or attic. Yeah. Okay, so you intentionally used a Ouija board by yourself and push it to spell out Zozo. Yes. And at this point, if you're by yourself, was the friend you were trying to scare even in the room? Yes, he was. He was actually hiding in the corner of the room. I wonder why. I wonder wonder why. I I know. know. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so did he tell you to stop? Did you not care? Like, were you not afraid at that point? You're just like, this this doesn't mean anything. This can't happen. It's a good question because I watched your old videos, Corey, with the Ouija board back then. Um, I wasn't scared of it at that point. I am kind of now, but I'm not afraid of anything that I've seen, even the thing in the story. Um, my friend told me to stop once and then was just shaking in the corner and I should have took that as a sign. So do you believe then that you summoned a demon that is now haunting you four years later. I believe that is the case, and I believe that also opened me up to seeing more things, because before that, I was not a believer, and I never saw anything, but now I see everything. But everything, are these things you want to be seeing? Yes, actually. You want to be seeing something standing over you while you're in bed, and then wake up with scratches? want that specifically okay Um, but like one other story i have is there's a little boy at my mom's house earlier this year um it's a well-known fact i don't like her boyfriend um little boy peeked around my bedroom door while i was watching youtube videos one of your videos um and he went into the bathroom right across the way and knocked something over which scared the out of my mom's boyfriend um And I thanked him for that because it was funny. And, (laughs) well, I said, if you want to talk to me at all, you're free to. Um, I was about to go to bed. So I said, if you're able to, you can project your story into my mind during my dreams. And that's what he did. So. So you had a dream? I was in a car with a drunk father. I was the drunk sister. And the little boy was in the back, and they got in a really bad crash, and the boy died. Did you have the dream that night? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay, so I have a question just to go back a little bit. Do you think that the Ouija board is what made you open to seeing, you know, even good spirits? Like, could you sense that stuff before the Ouija board? I could not sense that before the Ouija board, and I did not know that any of my family members were into witchcraft at all until I learned about it myself. Oh, do you think that maybe you had like an ingrained nature within you to go and utilize the Ouija board? And that's kind of where that motivation came from, because that's a very conscious choice. It's not a peer pressure choice where it's like four people and they're like, come on, try the board. You intentionally were like, oh, I'm going to go by myself, use this in the basement. That impulse had to have come from somewhere, whether it's films or YouTube videos or like your your heritage? Mm-hmm. Um, it definitely came from YouTube videos and I had found one of my dad's rings, which is like this one that I'm wearing. Here I can. Okay. Um, that one was bent and I had to reform my finger for it. Um, I just thought it was a cool star and he later told me what it was for, which is a protection symbol which is something not many people know. Um, But it is possible that, I don't know, it was just something I didn't know I had to do but did it so that I could open myself up to this. Not entirely sure. Have you heard any stories about anyone else in your family that would play a Ouija board growing up or anything? None of them have played the Ouija board as far as I'm aware. Um, But one of my aunts does see things constantly outside of her house or creatures that can't really describe very well. Um, But they're outside her house because she knows how to bless her house and protect it. So could anyone in your family help you get rid of whatever you think might be attached to you from that Ouija board session? Like, have you talked to them about it, probably? I do talk to them about it. And again, like, they say the best way is to do it yourself. So I've been trying constantly to do it myself. you imagine going to a doctor 
<laughs> and be like, hey, doc, uh, I got an appendicitis. Can you help me? He's like, best way, do it yourself. Like, it's, it's such a weird, that's such a weird answer to be like, you got to do it yourself. It's all about intention when you go into spell work. Yeah. No. But like, what happens if you do the wrong spell or like, I don't, yeah, that's. You botch your own surgery. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, it's very hard to botch your own spell unless you get fake materials or something like that. But as long as your intention is right and you have the right materials, then it should work. So obviously earlier we had someone who said part of the family were pagans and, and their family were pagans. And then, you know, you're saying your family were in the witchcraft world. Did you ever encounter that? Did you ever see them practicing, performing a spell, a ritual, anything growing up? Um... My aunt, my mother, and my grandmother have all smudged the house with sage many times. I did not know the reason until recently because it's when I started practicing myself. So, oh, so because you started practicing yourself, they all had to come together to clean up your mess. No. <laughs> that would be helpful, but no. Isn't, isn't, that what you, isn't that what you just said, though? They, had, they only started smudging once you started practicing. No, they were smudging before I knew about what they were doing. Okay. Like I didn't under, like I just thought it was a really bad smell, which my mom said that was banishing me from the house because demons hate the smell. Um, <laughs> wait, does that mean, wait, hold on. Did you just say your mom used to call you a demon? She still calls me a demon. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you said that so casually. I'm like, either I heard that backwards too, or your mom just hates you. I don't know. Oh, no, she, it's a loving term. It's okay, funny. it's a loving, just like my little demon? Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> exactly. So you you said like it. my little demon, baby. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> So you said that demons hate the smell of sage? Yeah, that's usually why they leave the place when you know they burn it. You know anywhere sells like sage candles? Uh, <laughs> Are you about to do Can Sanjay? Is that what you're about to do right now? <laughs> oh, no. I mean, we could talk. But no, I'm just trying to get some sage candles. I, I would, I would love that. We already talked. We already created the invention <laughs> Sanjay. I know, but if it could be burning 24-7 in my room and in, like, in the kitchen and stuff like that, I'd love that because I know so that stuff followed us to the house. We, okay, well, when we make, we were, we, earlier we talked about creating something called Sajay, which is like cologne, but it's sage. <laughs> um, and now we can just make Sajay candles, you know what I mean? Or Sajay bath bombs. Are and we then, expanding and the brand? And then, look, now you can have Sajay bath bombs and you can play the Ouija board in your bathtub in bath. <laughs> and keep it balanced out. Oh, good. You can just be like Zozo and you'd be like, F no, it smells too bad up there. <laughs> I'm not leaving the board. Um, there are not candles, um, Yet. but there are <laughs> bundles of dried sage that you can put in a little dish and it will burn for quite a long time. Okay. Can you eat sage? Yes. <laughs> What's the benefits of eating sage? Do you know? It makes food Vitamin taste better. Vitamin B. <laughs> What'd you say? Vitamin B. Vitamin B? Is that actual or are you just making that up? Is that vitamin bullshit? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it just makes food taste better as far as I'm aware, but if you boil it into tea, it's a good purifier. How, how do you feel now? Like, do you feel like, obviously you, you're still not doing everything you need to to completely eradicate it, right? It seems like you're okay with it, but how are you doing? I'm fine. I'm actually growing used to it. And why? Because <laughs> one of my younger friends, witchy friends said that it's actually quite protective of me. I don't understand why, but. But you feel as though it's harming your mental health. It was, and that is no longer an issue. Okay. So you feel just normal? You feel like you're at your, your best right now? Definitely, especially with my new boyfriend who's in the audience right now. Okay. <laughs> Did he? Does he have the card that Evan had earlier? <laughs> the perfectly fit? <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, I'm not answering that. <laughs> I just love making Corey uncomfortable. It's my favorite thing. I know it is. Okay, so he's helping you keep... Like, Is he practicing um, as well? Is he in the rich the witchcraft world as well? I'm, or is he just there to kind of keep you balanced? Uh, he's definitely there to help with balance, but I am teaching him a little bit. I'm not sure if he likes that or not, but... <laughs> um, <laughs> what do you think it is protecting you from? Like, has there been any signs of, like, danger that maybe it kind of jumped in without you maybe knowing or you did know or just any thoughts of that? Well, at the moment, because I've been seeing things outside my house after blessing my room, um, I'm guessing it's protecting me from other things like itself because it wants my energy to itself. Interesting. Okay. Ah, that so is interesting. If you were to leave your house, would it follow you or? 
Yeah, um, I saw it at marching band camp, which is oh, a that's few right, that's hours right. yep. away from my house. You, okay, so, 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 just, so you think that the reason why it could be protecting you from other, other evil things is because it just wants you to itself. That could like be... Like feeding off of your energy or protecting you. Which, which one do you think it is? It could be both. Um, there are certain um, parts of paganism and witchcraft that believe demons protect us more than the angels do. Um, that could be it. I'm not sure why I would have been chosen by a demon, but, you know, there's such things as that. Because when I was younger and I, like, played with the Ouija board, and, you know, and I was stupid and I got, you know, like haunted by the shadow man as I got older. And then especially after I moved out to LA and we got really serious with ghost hunting, I had a medium tell me and she said that the shadow man that she's seeing with me, it doesn't mean any harm. She said that it more looks like he's watching over me and making sure that I'm safe. Mm -hmm. And so that is just a crazy thing to think about. If you summon something evil, when it first comes to you, it's, you know, you're terrified. It probably does mean harm, mm -hmm. but because it spends so many years with you, it like gets an emotional attachment toward, right. towards you and starts protecting you. Yeah. Is that possible? That like even demons can somehow get an emotional, like fall in love with you in a way, like they want to protect you. Yes, Beauty, that's Beauty and the Beast, dude. Beauty and the Beast? <laughs> yeah, dude. No. Beauty and the Beast, man. You're the beauty. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks. But, but think think of it in like a literal sense. Think of it like, let's just go Vlad the Impaler, right? Vlad the Impaler did horrendous things and he had to conquer an area, right? And he had to do terrible things to conquer those people. You could be that person that has been conquered, right? But at the same time, he needs to protect you because without you, he doesn't have the fuel. He doesn't have the manpower. He doesn't have the will. He doesn't have anything he needs to con continue fulfilling all the other desires that he has. So do we need to get rid of him or do we just let him stay attached? I mean, he's going to impale you if you try and get rid of him. <laughs> so I should get rid of him. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you can think of it from that sense as well. If you want to think of it from a literal sense, like if you are a resource to something negative, then of course they're going to protect you because they need that resource to continue being that negative entity elsewhere. So even though it is protecting you, it's still harming you. Maybe you're the reason I want to open Dybbuk boxes. What? <laughs> I never wanted to until I met you. <laughs> Think about it. You have something evil attached to you and it influences me. Mm -hmm. And it uses your energy to influence me to make me do these things. No. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thanks for coming on stage. <laughs> <laughs> well, seriously, thank you. Thank you yeah. so much for sharing and uh, sharing that story. And now we have something fun to talk about on the next car ride. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? All those years of screaming Elton, and you should have been screaming, I'm sorry. It's it my fault. It was not me. Hmm. It was not me. He's been haunted since he was a child. You've also been haunted since you were around 14. Do you feel as though uh, you said you were to blame for that circumstance? Do you feel as though he's also potentially to blame? <laughs> your fear might feed him. <laughs> My fear feeds you. <laughs> no, no, no. Your fear might feed him, not me. Stop. You're trying to twist words around and you're not getting out of this. Man, it's hot in here, huh? <laughs> you know? Well, thanks for coming on stage. <laughs> All right, seriously, thank you so much. We really appreciate you joining us. Give a round of applause, everyone. Thank you. I'll take the mic tonight. Thank you. We can do one more story and then the Q&A. Okay. Evan? No. Uh, it's my turn. If you want, you can confirm that they're here. No, it's okay. All right. Bring it. Give, give it some life, though. Look, you had all of that. I literally drained my life on the Look, stage. You, oh, ew. Excuse uh, me? <laughs> that mm, you don't, had all Don't that, say that when you were straddling me. <laughs> <laughs> you had all of that physical energy. Give it some vocal energy. I heard you scream. <laughs> Come on. All this right. is the last story of the evening. Bring it to life. Give it some uh, Or if you can't, Corey can bring it to life. I think this last story should be brought to life. 
How about we take turns? No, oh, that's going to be so weird. like boom, 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 boom. I boom. feel like that's going <laughs> to, you can try it. I think you should start and we'll see how it goes then. Okay. Give it country. Country? <laughs> Johnny Cash it. Come on. All right. House of Terror. When my kids were young, we lived in a small trailer park. Oh my God. You're doing a country voice and it's about a trailer park. <laughs> <laughs> what are the odds? I've always had things follow me, but usually I could ignore them. <laughs> As the girls got older, things got a little harder to ignore. Keep it going. Keep it going. Things ramped up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. No, that's good. Hold, that's hold good. the paper a little bit lower, though. Yeah. Things ramped up when we decided to dig up a garden and a small Mother Teresa statue was removed from the dirt and some idiot decided to bring it in the house. Yo, yo, straight up, it sounds like you hit puberty twice. <laughs> it, it sounds like your voice decided to drop one more octave. <laughs> There's a reason why I'm behind the camera. I can't do voices. <laughs> you got it. You got it. There was an old woman who would stand behind each of their bedroom doors and just stare at them. She wasn't very scary, just liked to stand there and disappear or occasionally turn toys off and knock them onto the walls. Then it got a little bit scarier, or actually a lot. Ooh, that was a good little segue point, damn. <laughs> My kids would come running out of their room after being paralyzed with fear <laughs> telling me about an older man and a young boy sitting on the floor of their bedroom beckoning them for them to come and sit with them to play have you noticed that you like turn into an old crippled grandpa when you do that <laughs> you, you started here and you're like in the bedroom <laughs> The old man would come from the closet. Oh, wait, am I doing this? Okay. One night, <laughs> my youngest daughter came running through the house. You've been smoking, dog? <laughs> <laughs> Telling me his shadow took up her entire room. <laughs> okay, I got this. She could describe him in full detail that he had a wide brim hat. If the inside wasn't scary enough, when you sat outside late at night, you could hear the shuffling of feet. But no one was outside. It would send chills down your spine. There was a story when I was younger that I guess I pushed out of my brain before I moved into that place about an old house on that land and the man was a Satan worshiper. One night, he turned his gas stove on and blew up the entire house. But not before he put nooses on several trees and one had his dog on it. Your turn. Jack Daniels, Tennessee honey whiskey made with <laughs> rum. <laughs> made with real mahogany. When we moved, we thought we could leave it behind. Where's the country? I'm trying. When we moved, <laughs> we thought we could just leave it behind. The next house was... I can't do it. All right. If you, if you can't, we got it, bro. All right, take you it. Do me right. All right, go ahead, do it. All right. When we moved, 
We thought that we could leave it behind. The next house was just as bad, if not worse, because it became more aggressive. The sounds of people, multiple people, stomping up and down the stairs, things moving doors, closing on their own, and opening. There was even a part of the house that my dogs would not go into. Once that got too much, we decided to move on one last time to see if it would help during moving day. My oldest daughter was downstairs grabbing a box and there was a large glass brown candy tray that was yeeted across the room, breaking in thousands of pieces. One piece got stuck into her foot and we had to take her to the hospital. <laughs> to get it out that's when I knew I made a good idea to move the house we're living now is semi quiet but it has followed me here while laying in bed you feel something sit on you nothing scarier than having three dogs stare at the same part of the wall and nothing on it <laughs> Is that the end? <laughs> I sage the house regularly. And every now and then, when I feel like it's gonna blow up into something bigger, I go through the house with Palo Santo sticks in hopes that we can sleep through the night. Goddamn right. I remember going to bed not too long ago and waking up thinking I had left the door unlocked and found a huge clump of feathers sitting on a chair that I usually sit on. I still have them. I'm not sure what kind of feathers they are, but I've never seen a bird like that anywhere near my house. And they weren't there before I went to bed. Call it unlucky, I guess. But I guess I'll never be alone thinking of making the best friend bracelet for all of my demons that are following me now. L-O-L. <laughs> Jack Daniels, Tennessee honey whiskey. <laughs> Mate. <laughs> all right, I'm sorry. Uh, Michelle, would you please mind joining us here? Come on up. Get on up there, Michelle. Get on up. Could you guys understand us? <laughs> Everyone's like, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah? Oh, damn. Hey, I, I was born in Nashville, go. so. You're all good. You're good. Don't worry about it. Uh, just hold the mic as close okay. to your mouth as you can. And, and, and would you mind introducing yourself just one more time? My name is Michelle. Hi, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Thanks, Megan. <laughs> okay. So you moved and moved and moved, and this kept following you. Your kids have seen it. Your dogs have seen it. You've seen it. It's thrown objects around. Oh, yeah. Has it stopped? It's calmer, but it's never stopped. Okay. And then how long ago was this specifically? Uh, my oldest daughter is 19, and that happened when she was probably five. Bless you. She was probably five when it first started with the old lady, and the man that came in started when my youngest daughter was about two. Wow. And he would sit on the floor, and she said they would sit in circle with the little boy next to her bed and say, come play a game. And, of course, being two, she's like, no, and she would run into my room with a sheet over her to scare me half to death. <laughs> and then she would leave the room and sit in the living room just waiting. What do you think started it? Where did they come from? I've always had stuff. But when the idiot brought the uh, statue from the yard, I was like, oh, <laughs> thanks for the present. Was there already activity before that? Mm. Very little. I mean, things move, but nothing great. I could, like, debunk it. I'm like, oh, wind whatever was it a wooden statue i don't honestly remember because as soon as i seen it i remember screaming what the hell are you doing and 
and leaving the room. I don't know where it's at anymore. Okay. He brought it in the house. He sat it up. He washed it. Oh, so. I know where you were about to go with that, with the wooden statue. Oh, uh-huh. no. We have one. Oh, no. Someone, someone shipped us a wooden statue of uh, Mary and Joseph. I remember it being white. White. I don't okay. know if it was wooden or plastic. Yeah, ours are, ours are out there. They're wooden ones. And it was like one of the craziest things and the most intelligent haunted item I think you could literally ever have. It was, it was like, we, it, yeah. Again, we're talking about something that's coming out in a video somewhat soon, but that's why I'm asking because we literally were given one that was moderately oh similar gosh. where they said that their house was haunted uh, or they believed it was or something was in the house and they would pray to these statues every day. Oh and then what they did, what they felt though, was that all that negative energy they were praying away from them went into those statues. And then they decided to put them in their basement, lock them away in their basement. In the basement, they would always hear things. And here you have something that someone else dug up, which sounds like something extremely similar to an item we now have two of and encountered. So that's why I was asking yeah. wood, regardless of wood or not. Yeah. Lucky but, me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they could have dug up an object that they put all the negative energy into. And now do you still have it? It is somewhere in a box. In the house? It could be. Can you find it? Can I have it? Yes, I'll Thank send you. it to you, your cool. P.O. box. That. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> as soon as I find it, it is yours. Hey, the reason I love haunted <laughs> items, we already went over your f***ing fault. No. <laughs> we already went over this. No. I never wanted haunted items until I met you. No. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the feathers are outside if you want them. The feathers are there too? I'll take it. <laughs> did, you, the- did you ever think to go bury it back or, you know, where you found it, go put it back? I would have loved to, but literally that night... I kept asking, where was it? The subject kept getting changed. Mm. I never seen it. I just know that it's somewhere in the house. It has to be. Because I never, we wouldn't, he wouldn't have threw, I mean, who throws away a religious statue? Yeah. That's kind of creepy on its own. Yeah. Did you feel as though you were in danger or was it more so whatever this was, was kind of demonstrating aggression? I never felt in danger. The girls did. I didn't. Okay. Because it's, just kind of like, yeah, do your best. What do I got to lose kind of thing. Did they feel in danger or scared? <laughs> they were terrified. Uh, the oldest one was the one with the glass in her foot. Okay. The glass got thrown so far across the room, probably from like here to the first camera, and just shattered all around her. And my husband went down, picked her up, brought her upstairs. Her foot's bleeding. And literally the glass was so far in, we had to go get an ultrasound of her foot. Wow. Wow. Because some, sometimes I hear about poltergeist activity and I wonder if it's like an intentional, like I'm trying to attack you or is it along the lines of like a young child who gets frustrated and, and throws things around and has a tantrum? We've had that um, sitting in the living room watching TV. Uh, our biggest thing was watching Ghost Adventures. Every Friday night after school's over, watch Ghost Adventures and they had this big Dora ball. And it would just roll across the kitchen. No one's in there. At that time, I had no dogs. I had a cat that was too lazy to even get up to eat. So obviously, she's not moving it. And the ball would just roll back and forth. Was this before you found the statue? Right after. Oh, of course. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Lucky me again. (laughs) (laughs) So that means 14, 15 years later, 14, 15 years later, something like that, you still have the statue in a box. Yep. Why not get rid of it? (laughs) Friends, <laughs> no, huh? friendship. I don't. I don't know. I guess. What do you I've, mean? Friendship? Every time, attached to them? I, I want to kind of see what do they want. I'm so curious. It's just like this building has called to me for years, and this is my first time inside, mm. and I'm so excited to be in here. Stuff like that kind of intrigues me. I kind of want to know what do you want? What can I help you with? Can I help you get where you need to go? Have you ever thought about like getting a medium to come over and try speaking? I have thought about it, but I'm, so, I don't know. You're scared. I'm scared that I'm going to get uh, just somebody that's like, oh yeah, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Finding the right person. Yeah, for sure. I, I'm not, I'm not by any means trying to put you on the spot oh, no, here. No, no, no. So you, how long ago did you realize or think that this item was the cause of all this negativity? I don't think it's the cause of the whole negativity. But, but some I, of it, some you of it, attribute some of it, Some correct? of it, I do believe, I when, especially when we lived in that first house, that was all caused from there. I mean, the land was bad, just like I said about the man who burned his house down. Yeah. Um, 
that was a horrible situation. We don't know if that's exactly where his house was or if somebody did like a religious like release of him from the land by burying the religious artifact in there or what. But it's always been around. When we moved from that first house, everything was out of that house. Where the statue went, it's just I never could find it. Every box had been went through, at least I thought. But okay. it still could be in a random box. Who knows? Yeah, hey, because that, that, that was my question. If I could like, find it, I would right. love to find and it. And that was exactly what my question yeah. was. Like you, you attribute this item that you found yeah. for causing all this negativity. You sent one of your kids into the hospital, and yet and you kept it. That wasn't from them, from the statue, I don't believe. But you don't know. I don't. It could. Yeah. But re- true, re- regardless, true, true, true. regardless of like who did what, yeah. like you still kept it. I did. Out of interest, even though they're even like there's a slight chance it could be causing harm to your kids. You kept yeah. it anyway. Like that feels like a very controversial kind of it is decision. Yeah. But well, just like I said, if I could find it, I would love to get rid of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's just finding it. Because we moved, each house we moved into and moved out of in two days. Mm -hmm. It was just so, it's super fast. I got, had to leave the first house because my ex-husband's like, hey, bye. And the second house, we sold the house and within two days they wanted us out or we lost money. So I'm like, okay, we can do this. Who knows where the boxes are? And as soon as I move into the second house, my basement floods with over a foot of water. What? Yeah, you should get rid of that statue. Yeah, it needs to go. I need to find it. <laughs> it's but, I, but I see what you mean, though, because I feel like you don't think that that statue is all bad. I'm, you feel like I guess there I'm are good, it's friendly not. spirits yeah. that are also with it. So by you throwing that statue away or getting rid of it, like you feel like you're abandoning those yeah. good spirits. Right? Yeah, I guess so. Just kind of, you don't know what to do with it. Mm-hmm. Like, do you throw it away and then maybe it's stuck to you? Like if you burn a, a Ouija board, yep. bad idea. Or you throw away a haunted doll and it comes back the next day sitting on your couch. Yeah. <laughs> Did that happen to you? No. no. Oh, God. <laughs> I watch a lot of scary movies. I was like, tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> I watch a lot of scary movies. But I, I, I know what you mean. There's a lot of investigations, especially on this trip where, you know, we believe that we're speaking with someone nice and friendly and a good spirit and you know, I'll pray to them or something. And then we'll get other words coming in kind of mocking me and saying like Satan and ha ha and stuff like that. And it's, am I talking to the good spirit? And then there is now an evil spirit in the room also, or is the good spirit that I've been talking to not actually a good spirit and just pretending and he is evil, you know? So I feel like that's how you feel to that statue. right? Yeah. I don't know if it's good. I don't know if it's evil. I know the second house was really amped up and it was amped up even before I moved my things into it. Mm -hmm. The first night we had the house, I decided to stay over there with two of my dogs and I didn't stay the whole night. It was just constant footsteps up and down the stairs. Do you think it's the house or attached to you? I don't know. I hope it's not attached to me, but it kind of sounds like it is because everywhere I go, you can do stuff to cleanse yourself. You know, I have a, car full of sage and cool. yeah, we heard Palo Santo that. sticks in my and, car. And Sajay bath bombs, trademark. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. I'm going to need several of Next those. Fall. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> Bed, bath, and beyond. That's the beyond. <laughs> the be- the be- <laughs> Bed, bath, and beyond. beyond yeah, that's good. Well, just paranormal that's protection good. sense. Perfect. Okay, well, if you find it, it's, please let me know. Yeah, you know I mean, I'd love to have it. Yeah. Uh, it's courtesy all of Corey. Yours. You know, Corey wants me to have it for him. Uh, okay. So no. Should we write his name on the bottom of yes, it? No. Like, <laughs> like yeah. Woody. Yeah, let's, let's write, write Corey. Let's write his name on the bottom, and then let's all uh, sacrifice it in the middle of a room on top of a Ouija board. Oh like take a bunch of Ouija boards, make it like Kindle, chop them up. You know what I mean? And then burn the altar that's in his name. You know what I mean? Because that's okay. exactly what he wants me to do, courtesy of him. Don't forget the black candles in a circle. Yeah, we got that all of it so quickly. Yeah. Okay. So next video uh, coming out in February. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for coming on stage. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, sincerely, thank, thank you. you so much for sharing. Thank you A round so of applause much. as well. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, it is time that we end the show. Did you all have a fun evening? Perfect. Perfect. Perfect.
All right, Marty, Marty's going to come up here on stage. And then can you also give a round of applause for everyone that helps make these shows happen? Please. Yeah, yeah there's, there's Marty. Marty's right here. Well, come on, come up here. Marty's right here. Kyle's on the other camera. Marty's doing sound. Ginger, who checks you all in. Jerry, who's at the merch booth back there. And then Jenny and Riley, who helped do everything. Um, yeah. Good. Do it. Do it. Okay, we go take picture. picture. Jerry, hit that music. music.